sustainability and well-being. So feel free to drop any questions or comments and um, Rob will answer them for you. So we are now live on Facebook. Uh, kia ora, good evening, Etefano. Welcome to our well-being series. <laughs> Um, we're coming to you live on Facebook and Instagram, um, and tonight uh, I'm coming to you from Kitakitaroa, Hamilton, and want to acknowledge Waikato Tainui as the Manawa Fenua of the as the Manawa Fenua of the land I'm on, and Kingi to Haitia. My name is Gemma, and I'm the the co-founder and CEO of Seed Waikato, and I use she/her pronouns. I'm here with Robert Moore who is Waikato and Te Ati Awa, and he uses he, him pronouns. Rob's been on the board of Go Eco for seven years and is now their chairperson, as well as being a board member of Puni River Care. We're super excited to be speaking to him today because we know how passionate he is about social and environmental justice. So we're going to be live tonight for about 20 minutes. So if you're tuning in, um, stay with us. We'd love to um, have this all together. If you've got a question, please drop it in the comments. The comments are being moderated tonight. Kia ora, Pamela. <laughs> um, so, yes, please feel free to leave a question. So let's get into it. Kia ora, Rob. How are you? Kia ora. I am I'm really good. This is my first time ever um, doing anything live on Facebook or Instagram. So I'm super excited. But, yeah. It's so how, good how to have you on here. It's how's a bit Sunday weird, evening? hey. <laughs> like looking where are we meant to look <laughs> no we'll get into it this is going to be cool okay Rob so I'm really keen um really keen to touch on uh well-being um and sustainability in the environment tonight so uh we'd love to know how has your role at Go Eco and as well with Punia River Care changed your relationship with our whenua um I, I think prior to getting involved in these spaces, I used to do, and I still do quite a lot of hiking. I like to get outdoors, like to um, attend tree plantings, do gardening, that kind of usual stuff. But I think being involved with these organisations has, has really given me a greater understanding of like the the amazing work that's actually going on across the Waikato. Um, there are so many projects, so many initiatives from little one person projects to huge things. And that's just so exciting to see and to feel connected in a way to these projects. Um, and I think whether or not you're actually out there um, doing the getting your hands dirty or if you're helping in a fundraising, a promotion, administrative way, it's all needed and it's all good. Um, and I think just giving something mm. of yourself to something that's bigger than yourself mm. um, and that sense of community in that has, has um it's been life changing for me, and and yeah, that's massive. I yeah. love what you said there about like not necessarily like planting the trees physically or actually being out there using your hands, but sometimes it's the things we can do behind the scenes that help make the bigger picture work or the bigger vision happen, which is so cool. We can all play a bit based on like our strengths or things that we enjoy doing not everyone wants to be outside so it's yeah i love how you touch on that that's so cool um i'm curious how have your priorities for looking after your well-being changed over lockdown i've had an interesting lockdown i actually didn't leave the house at all um oh. i kind of hibernated i kind of retreated into my I guess I was here in my bedroom, just doing all my work from home, doing everything from home. Um, but then going out of it, um, I've started walking to work. Um, might not do it this week because of the rain, but I'm, I'm mm -hmm. just super keen to get out there now and actually return to hiking. And I, I purchased a kayak just before the lockdown. Cool. And I was, I've, I've been unable to use it. And I thought, no, um, by the time I get to use it, the weather will be bad. But um, I'm super keen to get out there and just immerse myself on the river and just yeah that is so cool take so a break from you, life you find uh, connecting with nature really like top of the list in terms of something to really improve your well-being yeah just breaking up the routine just breaking up looking at screens um mm. whether that's in the garden um and in, in my bedroom, I get, I'm really lucky, I get afternoon sun, so I can just lie back on my bed and just bask in it. 
Nice. It's just a really nice way to like recenter me away from everything else. Well, that's so awesome. I love that. I love nature. I've found myself really um, uh, going for a lot of walks in the park down the road. And when I get there, I take my shoes and socks off and just like really presence myself to the ground beneath me and, and just really connect in. And I feel so grounded through that practice. And it's like, even if I can't get to the park, I can go and stand on the grass out the front or the grass out the back, which is cool. So yeah, I love how how lucky we are in um, Kirikiriroa to have so many beautiful spaces to connect with nature. Yeah, Where absolutely. else do you like to go? What would be your fi- favorite hike in the region? Um, I really like going up Kakipuku, um, just south of Kiki. Um, oh. Kind of like the, I, I prefer it to like the Hakurimata um, uh, hike because the path yeah. is a lot wider. Um, and okay. It's a lot less popular. Yeah, the Hux is, um, well, I think I've made it to the top twice and probably cried after making it half or three quarters of a way up and then just cried and turned around because it was so physically demanding but also mentally as well like to have the determination to just keep going when it's so physically (sighs) so yeah I haven't heard of that one I'll have to check that one out um we've got a carrier that we can put Malachi in and it's a really easy way to be able to get out of the house and do some cool things I have to check that one out Cool, yeah. Um, if you're just tuning in, kia ora. Um, we can see there's a few people on Facebook. We're also on Instagram as well. Or if you're on the replay, kia ora. Um, drop your questions. If you have any questions about well-being, um, the environment or sustainability, um, any of the mahi at Goiko or Punia River Care, we're here with Rob. So please drop a comment um, and we can answer your question. Um I have another question here. Outside of Go Eco, how else do you support your well-being um, in regards to the environment? I feel like I did myself a disservice in how I answered the previous question now. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I guess it is getting out there, um, but it's even just gardening and just Mm. doing anything. I think that connects me um, with the whenua, um, getting back to Whangaroa, my ancestral whenua, seeing Karioi, my maunga, um, the moana. Um, I just find that really special as well. Mm, beautiful. Love that. Uh, and what advice would you have for young people in our region who want to reconnect and strengthen, strengthen their relationship with the environment? Um, I would recommend, um, given we're on these cool platforms that I don't tend to use that much myself, um, to go on and, and look up the GoEco um, social networks, social media, um, and connect with the with the Facebook and the Instagram and see all the different events that are actually happening or go into GoEco and Frankton. Um, just passively being aware of what's happening. Um, there are gully activities, there's seed and crop swaps, um, all sorts of different environmental initiatives um, that you might want to come along and join in with. Plastic Free July is coming up. Oh, um, cool! Yeah, there, there's and and there's just um, this is so much that you can get into and in, and in, in terms of wanting to connect um with the environment and I just feel like young people are so switched on in terms of that, in terms of thinking critically about transport options, consumption, mm. um, reducing meat consumption, for example, um, mm. the amazing student climate strike, getting out there, being an activist, getting up your elected officials and... That's awesome. And you're touching on there a few of the things that GoEco is up to. I think um, there might be some people who are online who'd love to know a little bit more about what are those projects and initiatives that you have at the moment that young people could get behind, volunteer their time or, um, yeah, get involved with. What's on the go at the moment with GoEco? Um, so it's an interesting time, um, kind of that coming out of hibernation again, coming out from mm. the Rahui. Um, but, but there will be lots of projects that are kicking off. Um, so like the, yeah, the crop swap, 
Um, so community members can come along, bring their surplus, take home other things. Oh, um, is that in Frankton? Yep, yep, so that's done at Frankton. Um, okay, and cool. all of the details of this are on the website or on the Facebook. Um, there's often even um, submission events, so opportunities to um, participate in our democratic process, speaking to um, city council, regional council, for example. Okay, cool. Um, um, and all sorts of different community groups and little networks use the GoEco space. So it's a real community hub. And so the, um, there might be a vegan group doing a um, little meeting there one night, for example, and people can come along. Wicked. And I have to say, like, um, the store's pretty cool as well. Like, I didn't realise that there was this amazing store of, like beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful products that are sustainably sourced. Um, yeah, do you want to do a little bit of a shout out to the store, <laughs> to the store, and um, like, what's that really, you know, um, enabling in the bigger picture with GoEco? I just think the store is so good in in meeting people on the journey to actually getting deeper into all of these issues because you might just pop in because you need you want to buy a gift for someone or you need to buy a new bamboo toothbrush. Um, and and it opens up the bigger conversation because um, the staff there are knowledgeable about what's actually happening in the community. Um, and in a world where we have to consume certain products, um, we do have an option to actually purchase things that are made more responsibly and tread lighter on the planet. Awesome. And so supporting these sorts of things, and it also supports um, GoEco to provide the other work that we do that, um, yeah. Needs funding, yeah. Yeah, that, um, you can't sell a toothbrush then. Yeah. Um, we've got a question from Pamela, Kia ora Pamela on Instagram. Um, give us an update on the latest money at GoEco. How did you go keeping Kaivolution up and running during the lockdown? Kia ora Pamela. Um, it, w it was actually a really busy time for Kaivolution. Um, lots of the local funders got together and said, we really need to um, put um, put everything we can into ensuring that people do have access to food. Um, and so a number of different social services and community organisations and networks rallied together um, and kind of pulled some infrastructure to be able to really um, pump out the food. Because so Kaivolution is a um, food waste initiative so we collect food that's not good enough to sell but is good enough to eat mm -hmm. um, and we collect that from supermarkets and suppliers and then redistribute that to the community and during the COVID situation the, there was still the food waste um, being produced so we had to find ways that we could give that out in a meaningful way that people could who needed it um, could receive that without barriers um, wow. but, but in ways in different ways it didn't induce a huge crowd to turn up and yeah and i and i i guess as well some of the fundraising would have been impacted um around some of your different um initiatives what what's the situation at the moment and if people are wanting to support some of the activities down at Polico, um, what can we do to get behind these really important services well, that, that's a really nice segue because unfortunately we had a big fundraising dinner just for Kaivolution planned. Um, and so we had to pull that because that was over that period. Um, but you can go onto our website. There's a donate feature. Um, there are other ways that you can just pop in to support the organisation. All help is appreciated. <laughs> So good. Yeah, so good. I know that that's such an important fundraiser for you guys as well. So it's cool to know that we can now donate online through the website. Um, and if people are wanting to volunteer to come in and get in touch to find out what um, the different opportunities are to give back. Um, I wonder, we've got a question on Facebook. How do you maintain sanity when we see the Fenua being destroyed by climate change? That's a good question. I, I think it's hard. I think I think there is a real challenge in being so invested in these issues and not just going to a really 
deep dark place because some of the stuff that you can look at is is actually deep and dark um but the but the only way that we can overcome this and and the real strength that we have as individuals who are passionate and who give a damn about these things is is our relational power that we have um in our communities with our networks with our peers and our fano and if we can organize with them um that's the only thing that can overcome these great challenges like climate change awesome that's huge thanks for the question danielle um we've got a question from jesse stevens uh, i want to ask this one for both of you can we talk about a circular economy is there a better way to forward move forward in regards to awareness as a wider society to promote the connection between society's responsibility towards the environment and our economy what do you think rob yes yes definitely <laughs> we need a circular economy so we need to be thinking about our whole system and not just um and 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 i think an example is um how during the rahui our waste infrastructure has been impacted and suddenly everyone's stockpiling all of this recycling that can't go out um hopefully they're if they're able to stockpile that to then drip feed it out once those systems return again mm. um but, but yeah um, what, what do you think part of the question what do you think are the barriers for this like why why aren't we seeing this now what, what do you think the reasons are as to why this this isn't the norm i i think for too long it's been too cheap for industry to not have to um up their game but i think increasingly people are really passionate and actually care about this um and increasingly people are calling on our leaders to actually implement change and actually um put targeted levies um not allow um, for-profit products be sold where the disposal of that comes back to us collectively mm. as, as ratepayers. Mm. That's cool. That's, I think yeah, there's a lot of work really that can go on in this space. Yeah. Sorry, say that again. Oh, th there's so much to win in this space. Mm. Um, yeah. And, and I think people want that. Absolutely. Um, what would your advice be for anyone wanting to um really make some changes to reduce their environmental impact um and care more for our planet what what would be your top tips top tips um oh this is so deep because you could just go you could do a huge deep dive look at your transport how you get around can you walk or bike one day a week um can you go meat free one day a week or a bit more um thinking about what you're purchasing is it local what are the carbon what's the carbon impact of buying things that comes from overseas um so buying seasonally um yeah towards advocating for the structural solutions that are needed to make those options easier for people oh that's a goodie <laughs> yeah, that's yeah it's, it's not all individual lifestyle i mean that's good but we also need yeah. to make those lifestyle changes easy for people yeah absolutely that's a really good point and i think it's cool like we don't need to necessarily you know if you're wanting to reduce your environmental impact it doesn't necessarily look like doing everything all the time better um you know it's just like one day a week like you say, using a bike or going, you know, walking or taking the bus or one day a week going meat free and, you know, slowly making changes um, over the longer term. That's cool. I like how you phrase that. Um, okay, so if you have a time to otherwise we're going to wrap this up. You see there's a bunch of people that have tuned in on Facebook, which is awesome. Cure the summer. Um, and yeah i guess i just must have thank you to you rob for taking the time to have this conversation tonight and for overcoming all the tips <laughs> um so i'm not going to questions coming in um but yeah thank you so much for your time and uh if people want to get in touch with you um they can reach out via the go into your page is that the best place to contact you yeah 
yeah. with it. Okay, so we'll make sure we've got the go details in the comments. And thanks for tuning in. Have an awesome week. Kia ora, thank you. Okay. And.